murder at the end of the world creators Brit Marling and Zalbat Manglage are a resilient duo. Instead of letting disappointment linger, the longtime creative partners quickly rebounded after the cancellation of their beloved genre bender The OA and channeled its many profound takeaways into their next story. The Netflix series struck a deep chord in viewers around the world and seeing firsthand the community and energy that had formed around their work. Marling and Bat Manglage further trusted their storytelling instincts until a new name rose to the top of their collective mind, Darby Hart. Their FX on Hulu Limited series chronicles past and present Darby, Emma Corrin, who's an amateur sleuth turned true crime author. She combines the hacking and investigative skills of Mr. Robot's Elliot Alderson and Girl with the Dragon Tattoo's Lisbeth Salander with the death-adjacent upbringing of Six Feet Under's Claire Fisher. Despite those familiar comps, Darby soon becomes her own unique force as she stops at nothing to solve a murder at an exclusive tech retreat in Iceland, all while attempting to reconcile her relationship with her first love and former partner in true crime, Bill Farah, a Harris Dickinson. After portraying the central figure on the OA, Marling opted for a supporting yet integral role as Lee Anderson, a former hacker who's now the wife of Andy Ronson, Clive Owen, the tech billionaire who's hosting the remote Icelandic getaway. Marling's choice not only revolved around her desire to direct three out of the murder mystery seven episodes, but it also stemmed from wanting to create a complex female role for the next generation, an option that wasn't available to her after she broke out at the 2011 Sundance Film Festival with Sound of My Voice and Another Earth. Darby Hart came from a place of wanting to write the kind of role that wasn't an offer when I was coming of age, and to try to think about the project of telling stories that include new people in them as a more intergenerational project. Marling tells The Hollywood Reporter, Helping create opportunities extends to Bat Manglage as well. He and Marling have always served as co-writers, whether it was their two series or their two films, Sound of My Voice, in the East 2013, and then he'd focus on directing while she acted. However, on Murder at the End of the World, Bat Manglage willingly relinquished his role as the director so that Marling could helm the series premiere and set the tone for the remaining episodes, including the four he directed. I knew that Britt was going to be a natural director. I just didn't understand how much I would enjoy the experience of watching Britt direct, Bat Manglage says. Certain actors, when they get into the directing chair, just have a sensitivity. I saw Emma and Harris bloom in certain ways when Britt was working with them, and that inspired me to want to go take acting classes. Even at a time when the streaming bubble has seemingly burst, Marling and Bat Manglage remain optimistic about finishing the OA someday. But the terms would have to be creatively favorable when you consider that they already shot down Netflix's offer of a wrap-up movie. Twin Peaks came back after a long time. We just need the conditions and the circumstances to be right. Dormant seeds in the desert do bloom, so who knows? Marling says. Below, during a recent conversation with THR, Marling and Bat Manglage also discussed their new series dual narrative and how the OA's subreddit had a hand in inspiring Darby and Bill's own Reddit-based union. Well, as soon as I read the announcement about a murder at the end of the world, the heartbroken OA fan in me immediately grabbed onto the word, limited, and I said to myself, oh, they went limited to avoid the same fate as the last show. So was the format actually a response to the OA's premature cancellation? Britt Marling. I don't think we had thought of it that way. It might be because we usually don't decide the length of a story until the story is fully formed, and then it tells you what it wants to be. We have some ideas between us where we're like, oh, that's like a poem, so it's just two hours. It's a film. And when this idea came to us, it was like, oh, this is a clear novel with a beginning, a middle, and an end where a young amateur sleuth is invited on a tech retreat. We know the ending, and it only needs about seven to eight hours to tell. So that's really where the limited format came from, but I'm curious what Zal will say.